Fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. unrest that followed the Civil War, a powerful secret organization called the Legion of the Black Arrow sprang up in the western United States. Its members were to be found everywhere, defying the law or using the law for their own purposes, working toward the ultimate goal of revolt and the foundation of a despotic empire. It was the masked rider of the plains who led the fight against this band of outlaws and traitors, and for once his great strength and courage his daring and resourcefulness were taxed to the utmost in the cause of democracy. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, on the trail of the Black Arrow. Come on, Silver, Come on. after midnight when the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode into Sioux City with their prisoners and turned them over to the sheriff. Once they were locked up, the masked man questioned the lawman about Torlock. We were told he was heading for your town, Sheriff. A uh, big man, eh? Yes. Black hair and black eyes. I'm afraid I haven't seen him. There's been no stranger in town that answers that description. What's he wanted for? It's the federal government wants him. Oh, important, eh? I wish I could tell you how important. I wish I could help you, but I can't. Well, then Tonto and I had better make our camp outside of town. We can't leave if there's any chance of our finding him around here. Well, look, if you're going to stick around, maybe you can help me out. I got a mighty funny case, masked man. We'll do anything we can. Just a second till I get the circular out. Uh, here it is. Take a look at that picture. Dan Hardy, wanted for murder. Yeah. It happened during the holdup. A guard was killed and $50,000 in gold was stolen. Seems to me I've heard of Dan Hardy. Wasn't he a scout with Halleck? That's right. And he's turned outlaw? Sure looks like it. But do you have any proof? The driver gave us a positive identification. We weren't able to find Dan for three weeks. And when a man runs away, well, that don't look so good. You mean you've arrested him, Sheriff? Well, that's the funny thing about it. Day before yesterday, the stage came in from the east. And who should step down but Dan Hardy, big as life and bold as brass. Well, naturally, I arrested him... Only this hombre said he wasn't Dan. Said he was Dan's twin brother. Here, here's his papers. David Hardy. Yep, and he said he was in Chicago when the holdup took place. He knew all about it then. Sure did. Since you have his papers, I take it you locked him up anyway. Well, I wasn't just going to take his word for it. No, of course not. Would it be possible for me to have a talk with him? I want you to. You see, it's going to take a long time to check up with Chicago. And if this isn't Dan, then Dan's getting farther away every minute. Tonto. You knew most of the men who worked for Halleck. You better come with me. Ah. Just follow me.
Wake up, Hardy. Yeah. What? Well, hold this lantern up high so you can see, masked man. There he is. Here's the circular. So you brought an outlaw to identify me. This is no outlaw. What's he wearing a mask for? He's the one who's going to ask the questions, not you, mister. Well, it won't do him any good. I've told you the truth, and I've got nothing more to say. Dotto? Mm, that fellow looked like him worked for Halleck. This not same one. He doesn't look as if he'd spent much time in the West, Sheriff. I know. He talks like a dude. If I'd ever seen Dan more than once or twice, maybe I could be sure. Dave, how did you hear about the holdup? We have newspapers in Chicago. Why did you come west? That's my business. Oh, I see. How long has it been since you've seen your brother? About five years. You have no right to hold me here, Sheriff. I demand that you take me before a judge. A judge won't be here till next month. Well, where is he? Riding the circuit. Then I demand to see a lawyer. I'll send him to the judge, wherever he is, and have him get rid of habeas corpus. You can't deny me counsel. It's my constitutional right. You talk like a lawyer yourself. I have nothing to say to that. Sheriff, let's go back to your office. Hmm? I have a suggestion. Oh, sure. Sure thing. Well, masked man? You were right, Sheriff. He's Dan? No, he's a lawyer. Now, if there happened to be another lawyer in town, you'd have to let Hardy see him. Did you think I was going to admit we didn't have one? Well, you have no case against him. His papers seem to be in order, and when the judge gets here, he'll be set free. Mm, I might just as well let him go now. That's what I was going to suggest. Yeah? Here's my reason. I believe that Dan may have gotten a message to his brother after the holdup. Ask him to come out here and defend him. Mm, why not, if he's a lawyer? It's possible that Dave may know where Dan is. Set him free, Sheriff, and Tom and I will follow him. Then, if we find Dan... You'll bring him back here. I'd rather not promise. You see, there are one or two things about this case I can't figure out. Why, it's simple. It may be, I'm not sure. If we find Dan, will you let me decide what to do afterwards? He's wanted for murder. I'll remember that. Well, then go ahead. Whatever you decide is fine with me. Thank you, Sheriff. Come along, Tonto. Half an hour later, Dave Hardy roused the owner of the town livery and bought a horse. An hour later, he was on the trail heading west. The Lone Ranger and Tonto allowed him to get out of the sight before they started after him. But the moon was bright and Hardy's trail was an open book to the Indian. They rode steadily for ten miles and then... Him turn off here, Cam Kimitabi. This trail must lead into a ranch. Ah, there's sign. Maybe you tell you. Yes. The Circle F Ranch, Jane Foreman. This is on the main trail. I don't think Dan would be hiding out here. We follow trail? Wait a minute. Someone riding this way. Ah, maybe he'll make a mistake, find out, and come back. Quick, into the trees. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. He won't be able to see us from here. Not right. Him right, plenty past. But Tonto, that isn't Dave Hardy. No. I think we'd better find out who he is and why he's in such a hurry. Uh, Come on, Silver, after him. Get him up, Scout. Back east. Him ride to town. Right up there. Okay. Ready with your lariat, Tonto. Oh, boy. Whoa. Uh, Tonto, not need rope. Him do what you say. Steady there, Silver, steady. Yes, man. You called the engine Tonto on your horse, Silver. That's right. You were the Lone Ranger. Who are you? Nick Mason. He used to drive the stage on the Centerville run. Maybe you don't know anything about it, masked man, but I was driving the night Dan Hardy held up the stage and murdered the guard. Well, what are you doing out here, and why were you riding so fast? I found Dan. I knew he'd turn up here sooner or later, and he has. You were riding for the sheriff? Yeah, but if you want to ride back to the ranch with me, you can take him prisoner just as well as the sheriff. I'll point him out to you, and then you... You made a mistake, Nick. No, I saw him. Are you talking about someone who just rode up to the ranch? How do you know? Well, we've been following him ever since he left town. It isn't Dan. It's his twin brother, Dave. No, Dave's in jail. The sheriff set him free tonight. Set him? You sure about that? Absolutely. I'll be dogged. I thought it was all over. Tell me this, Nick. Why are you so anxious for Dan to be caught? Oh, why shouldn't I be? Ben Johnson was my friend and Dan killed him. Not only that, I'm scared. Why? It was my testimony made him get out that wanted notice. If they don't find Dan pretty soon, he'll find me. He'll get even. How would you feel if there was a killer on your trail? 
So you believe Dan means to kill you? Well, if he don't hang first, sure. Why do you think he'll turn up here? Because of Jane. They were going to get married. Now, I'm not saying she had anything to do with the robbery or the murder. Jane's a nice girl. Maybe she's through with Dan now, but just the I same... I understand. There's a chance you may come back here. It's all I can think of. That's why I've been hanging around so much. You'd better ride back to town. Yeah? You mean I'm in danger? You're a pretty good judge, and you think so. All right, Tonto, we're heading for the ranch. Uh -huh. Get him up. Come on, Silver. The great horse Silver was given his head, and with Scout racing at his side, they swept up the trail toward the ranch. Around a turn in the bunkhouse could be seen, dark and silent. Beyond it, the corral. A grove of cottonwoods was passed, and then the ranch house. A single light shone out from the living room window, and the lone ranger and Tonto reined up in front of the porch. Good you have gun ready. There won't be any need for guns, Tonto. Not here. A masked man. If you don't mind, Miss Foreman, we're coming inside. Dave, it's a masked man and an engine. You needn't be alarmed. Dave. I've seen these men before, Jane. You, you have? Is your sheriff crooked? Why, no. Then I don't believe these two are. They're friends of his. As a matter of fact, it was because of them I was set free. You're guessing, Dave. Can you deny it? No, I can't. Do you mind if I do a little more guessing? Not at all. The reason for your being so considerate was that you wanted to follow me. Well, that's true. Why did you come here? Because Miss Foreman asked me to. Not recently. She wrote me in Chicago when Dan was accused of murder. Is there anything wrong with that? I knew they'd find Dan and try him. Why shouldn't his brother be here to defend him? Then you are a lawyer, Dave. I am. Tell Miss Foreman something. How will the law treat her if she helps Dan to escape? Oh, I've never Or helped. even if she's given him food, helped him any way at all. What does the law say about that? She'd be an accessory after the fact. Where is Dan, Miss Foreman? I'd have liked it much better if you'd come in and ask me that first. There was no need for breaking a window. A window? That one right over there. Oh, I see. I suppose you didn't tie a note around a rock and throw it in here. No, I didn't. What was in the note? If you wrote it, you know. If you didn't, it's none of your business. Are you going to tell me where Dan is? Even if I knew, I wouldn't tell you. You have no right to ask me. Not even if I were trying to help you? Dan and I don't want your help. Dan and you? I, I meant... I meant Dave. It's going to be hard to forget that uh, you said Dan... Good night, Miss Foreman. Jane Foreman and Dave Hardy watched the Lone Ranger and Tonto as they headed down the trail. Shortly afterwards, the ranch house became dark. But the masked man of the Indian had not ridden far. They circled back to the grove of cottonwoods, and there they waited, hour after hour. We watch here plenty long time, Kimasabi. Yes. They come in one more hour. If nothing happens by then, we'll find some place to make camp and wait until tomorrow night. Uh, I don't think we'll have to, though. What do you mean? There was a flash of light in the back of the house. Might be the kitchen. Uh, moon's still bright. Nobody outside. And there will be soon. Watch the back door. Oh, don't you see? It's a girl. She's heading for the crowd. We follow her? Yes, Kimasabi. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. The Lone Ranger and Tonto watched Jane Foreman saddle her horse. Even from the grove, they could sense the desperation in her swift movements. She seemed driven by fear. Then at last, the cinch was tightened and she swung into the saddle. The masked man and the Indian waited until she had disappeared over a rise before they started after her. The moon was still bright, and once again, Tonto's keen eyes made no mistake. Away from the level rangeland, up a rocky canyon, into the forest. Here, there was only one trail through the giant pines. Air light through trees. The campfire. Steady, boy, steady. That girl ran up a fire. And a man waiting for her. He's back this way. She's taking something out of her saddlebag. Uh, food, maybe. No, Tonto. She's handing him. Maybe that note she talked about. Yes, they're having an argument. He moved round, other side fire. Stand all right. Looks as if he were going to get on her horse. No. Girl, have guns. She's pointing it straight at him. Or shoot him. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story, 
Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. As Jane Foreman fired at Dan Hardy, the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced toward the campfire. The girl was sobbing when they reined up beside her. Dan, I, I didn't mean to do it. Oh, out of the way, Miss Foreman. The masked man. Take a look, Tonto. Oh. I haven't killed him, have I? No, Jane. He didn't do much more than tan the bridges. Uh, bullet only scrape leg below knee. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> sorry you didn't kill me. You know what I mean. I wish I could understand this. Who are you? He, he's a friend of the sheriff's. Now that he's found you, he'll take you to jail. Oh, why did I come out here tonight? I should have waited until Hold I... Hold on a second. This masked man is a friend of the sheriff's. That white horse he's riding. There's only one explanation, Jane. What? He must be the Lone Ranger. The, the Lone Ranger? Masked man, I've heard about you. They say you give a man like me a chance. A man is innocent until he's proven guilty. That's the way the law's supposed to work, but it don't. If I'm arrested now, they'll hang me sure shooting. Did you kill Ben Johnson? No, I swear it. Then how do you account for Nick's testimony? Well, that isn't hard. I rode past the stage a little before the holdup took place. Nick recognized me. Now, if one of the road agents happened to be riding a horse like mine, well, I don't blame Nick for making a mistake. He's been very certain. Oh, I don't blame him. Nick's honest, and he thinks he's telling the truth. The only chance I've got is to find the real killer. I agree with you. We have a lead, Mass Man. No, you haven't, Dan. It's nothing but a trick. You seem to be anxious to help Dan, Miss Foreman. I am. Then why did you shoot him just a moment ago? Let him read the note, Jane. Here. Is this the note that was thrown into your living room? Yes. I want to do what it says right away. Follow the Underground River and you'll find the gold. That means the gold that was stolen from the stage. What about the Underground River? You know where that is? Sure. It isn't really a river, just a creek. It flows out of a cave in Windy Ridge. Now, if we can find the gold... Dan, if you won't pay any attention to me, you've got to pay attention to Dave. We talked this all over. The only men who know where that gold is are the outlaws who stole it. They wouldn't tell you about it unless they wanted to capture you. Two can play at that game. Wait, there's another possibility. Well, you've told me. I, I want to tell the masked men. I say the sheriff or one of his men could have written this note. And in that case, there won't be any gold at the mouth of the river. There'll be a posse. The sheriff didn't write it. He wants to take Dan a prisoner. The sheriff believes Dan has the gold. No, Miss Foreman, your first idea was better. It's a trap anyway. I I didn't really mean to shoot Dan, but that's why I tried to stop him. Where is Windy Ridge? To the west. You'll be able to see it when it gets a little lighter. Might be a good idea to go there. Not Dan. Dan and I. That's only a scratch, Dan. It won't interfere with your riding. I'll say it won't. Tonto. Uh-huh. You ride back to town. Tell the sheriff where we're going. You're not going to use my horse. I... Get up there. Jane. It's all right. Silver can carry double. Tonto, start now. Yes, Kimasabi. We'll give you time to reach town before we leave here. Uh-huh. Get him up, Scout. Have you, have you got some plan, Mass Man? I have an idea. It may be hard to prove, but I believe the man who wrote that note... Kill Ben Johnson. Hours passed, and Dan became more and more nervous, anxious to leave the camp. But it was not until the sun was directly overhead that the Lone Ranger swung into the saddle. With Dan behind him, he rode down from the forest and through the canyon. Then, instead of going on toward the main trail, he swung to the left across country. Not once did he allow the great white stallion to break into a full gallop. And it was two o'clock before they saw a thread of silver ahead of them. Another half hour before they reined up on the banks of the stream. Steady, Silver. Is this the creek, Dan? Yeah. And there's the ridge up ahead. You can see the opening in the cave, can't you? I've been wondering. That's the main trail to the north. The one that goes to Centerville. What about it? Didn't the holdup take place somewhere around here? Yeah. I think we may find the goal if we follow the river. Well, that's what the notes said, but... Well, get down. <clears throat> Where are you going? 
I want to take a look at these hoof prints on the bank. Yeah, I can see them. Just one horse. They were made less than an hour ago. Someone forded the creek here and then rode on toward the cave. Yeah. We're going on? Right away. Here, I'll give you a hand. <coughs> Come on, Silver. either side of the creek. If you want to ride into the cave, you'll have to use the bottom of the stream. That's all right. It's shallow. For how long? Well, I haven't ridden in there very far. You'll try it. If it gets deep, the current will carry us back toward the opening. Into the water, Silver. Come on, boy. I don't blame him. Blame him for what? I'm not liking the looks of this place. It's dark plenty quick. Maybe we should have brought a lantern along. We'd make a fine target if we carried a lantern. You, uh, you figure there's somebody up ahead? The gold's up ahead. Someone must have brought it here. Yeah. And don't forget those hoof prints we saw. They led straight to the opening. <laughs> What's the matter? Nothing, I guess. Something brushed against me. Maybe, maybe a bird. I think your shoulder brushed the wall, keeping close to one side. It wasn't rock. Well, try to be quiet. Sure. The stream's turning. We're losing all our light now. Plenty dark. Wonder where this is taking us. The walls are closing in and the ceiling's lower. If the bed of the stream weren't deep here, here we wouldn't be able to sit up straight. Come to a blank wall pretty soon. You going on? Are you losing your nerve, Dan? No, it's... I just keep thinking about what Jane said about a trap. I don't like this place. The cave must lead somewhere. There's been no opening to the right or the left. Someone rode in here ahead of us. I... I forgot. You hear that? That roar? It's a long way from here. What is it? Sounds like a waterfall to me. Then we are coming to a dead end. The spring comes out of the rock. Let's wait until we get around the next turn. Say, you're right. That's daylight. The cave goes right through the ridge. Looks like it. We're coming out into a valley. Gosh. What, Dan? I never figured I'd be so glad to see daylight. It isn't much of a valley. You can see the waterfall at the far end. Look at the sun catch it. We'll be out in the open in another second. And that's when the fight will start. Huh? Quiet. Just a, just a sort of pocket in the ridge. Oh, but you're wrong, masked man. There ain't nobody in here at all. Up the bank, Silver. You see those big rocks over there, Dan? Yeah. Come on, Silver. Sure, on the far side, a horse. But no rider. It's Jane's horse. What could she be doing here? She knew we were coming. Where is she? There's someone lying on the ground. That isn't a woman, it's a man. Whoa, 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 Silver, whoa. That's my brother, Dave. Bound and gagged. Jane must have sent him to stop us. We got this gag out of his mouth first. Dave, what happened? Who was it? That Look out, behind you. Up on the rocks. That's just a sample. Up with your hands or I'll fill you full of lead. Oh, 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 are you sure they weren't in here, Charlo? Ah. Come to see you from top of last rise. Uh, it does look like we'll get anywhere, but we've you got... come plenty fast. Maybe they're in danger. All right, Tano. Follow the engine, boy. We're, about to We're going into the cave. He's coming down from the rocks. Yes. Keep your hands up. I wish he didn't have that bandana over his face. Dave, did you see anything of a treasure chest? It's over there a little way, in the bushes. I was trying to open it when he came up behind me and knocked me out. And it doesn't matter about the bandana. Hmm? That man is Nick Mason. Nick Mason? He's the only one who could have thrown that rock through the window. Todd and I saw him near the foreman ranch last night. And if the gold is really here... Then he must have stolen it himself. I don't understand. Who's Nick Mason? The driver of the stage. He shot the guard and hid the gold before he drove into town to accuse Dan. Glad to see you're smart enough not to make any move. Too bad you didn't show your brains before, masked man. Aren't you going to take our guns? I'm not coming close enough for that. You might just as well take off the bandana, Nick. 
So you know me, huh? Of course. Well, I suppose you mean to kill us. Sure do. Would you mind explaining something before you shoot? What, for instance? You thought that Dan would come here alone when you left that note. Yeah, I knew Jane would get it to him. You planned to shoot him and leave him beside the treasure chest. Am I right? You're always right. I'll tell the sheriff I trailed him here and had to shoot him. You'll lose the gold. <laughs> it's a funny thing about that gold. Haven't figured any way to get it out of the county. I guess I'll have to be satisfied with a reward for catching Dan. Well, what about Dave and me? Don't we complicate matters a little? Not too much. I can get rid of you so you'll never be found. Won't there be questions? You won't hear none of them. I wonder. You can't believe you're really gonna die, can you? I don't believe you'll get away with this. And why not? Because we sent Tonto for the sheriff before we left Dan's camp. We took our time getting here, and Tonto and the sheriff and his posse are riding into the valley right now. I'm not turning around, mass man. You won't have to. Just listen. Mass man, I never saw a draw like that in my life. Shot the gun right out of his hand. You all right, Kimasabi? Fine, Tonto. Well, here's your prisoner, Sheriff. Too bad, Dan. I don't like it. Dan, Sheriff. The man you want is Nick Mason. What's that? It wasn't a gang of outlaws that held up the stage. Nick killed the guard and stole the gold himself. Both Dan and I heard him admit it. You'll have all the evidence you need to convict him, Sheriff. The gold's right over there. Get it, boys. And as for you, Nick, you get this nice new pair of handcuffs. Uh, Kimasabi. Yes, Tonto. Sheriff have a message for you. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I almost forgot. What is it, Sheriff? Well, the stage brought me a letter this morning. It was from Stephen Hayden, the newspaper editor over in Bennett City. Yes? He said if I happen to run into you that... Uh, oh, wait a minute. I got it right here. Let's see, uh says, tell the mask man I have information which will lead to the capture of the worst criminal in the whole West. He'll understand who I mean. This is a matter of life and death, and he must hurry to Bennett City at once. To Bennett City? Here, Silver. Uh, wait, there's more. Uh, I close this letter with a prayer you find him soon. The whole future of the West depends on it. <coughs> You're leaving? Stephen Hayden doesn't exaggerate, Sheriff. The man he's talking about is Torlock. Come on, Silver. Hit him up. Oh, oh, The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>